Hey, what's up and welcome to the Beyond Sundays podcast. I'm the host, Brett Stewart. Today, back with me, my co-host, Sarah Michelle Turner. Hello. What's up? How are you feeling today? Feeling great. How are you? I'm good. Uh, I said Michelle. Sarah Michelle. <laughs> uh, she has this very like colorful, bright shirt on. Mm. Um, and so like I can't help but like feel happy. Oh, that's good. Yeah, <laughs> compared to our other guests uh, and what they're wearing, it's kind of it's kind of dull. Um, oh, so they bring me, you know, dull feelings. But Sarah, you you bring me a, a level of happiness oh, I'm today. I'm so glad. <laughs> <laughs> but anyways, I'm excited about our conversation uh, today. We've got two guests and. We're going to be talking about a lot, and in fact, this is a two-part episode, uh, and there's going to be some big announcements in this episode as well. Uh, but let me introduce our guests for today. We've got Randy Reese and Zach Vasser. So as promised, let's start with Randy Reese. <laughs> Randy. <laughs> Hi, Brett. How are you doing? I'm, I'm good. That's good. Randy, tell us... Um, this is always a loaded question, but who are you? Uh, what does this season of life look like for you now? And for those who don't know that are listening to this, what uh, what did the previous season or previous employment look like for you? Well, uh, until uh, March of this year, for the previous 13 years, I was the men's pastor here and... Uh, that was uh, there's a whole lot packed into those 13 years, yeah. beyond a shadow of a doubt. But they were they were really really terrific years and uh, filled with lots of opportunity that I'm thankful for. And then um, the fall of last year, maybe late summer, I began to sense. Well, actually, the Lord made it pretty clear that it was it was time to. To uh, go into the next season, yeah. and uh, so uh, we are in the process of starting yeah. a season of a combination retirement, sort of, kind of, but just some kingdom work that will be a little different. Yeah, for sure. In, uh, in shape, but uh, yeah, it's been an interesting season. But yeah, and we're gonna—I mean, that's what our conversation today is about. We are talking uh -oh. about seasons and transitions in life because. Whether we like it or not, whether we realize it or not, our lives are full of seasons and moments and assignments and transitions. Um, and so we'll dive more into that here in just a moment. Uh, but before we go to Zach, Randy, you were just telling me that your what number grandchild is on the way? Number 19 is on the way. 19 grandchildren. I cannot even fathom. I can't hardly, if they're listening, I'm sorry. I can't hardly remember my parents' birthdays. Uh, my wife and I don't have kids yet. But it's like, it's hard enough for me to remember like two or three people's birthdays. How do you keep up with not just not only the names of your grandchildren, but their birthdays and all those things? Is it easy or is it hard? Oh, it gets harder all the time. But <laughs> names I still have down. <laughs> Birthdays are on a written calendar that okay. Donna and I have. We both have to refer to that, and usually we'll see it about three days late. We went, oh, <laughs> shoot. You know, <laughs> we missed one again, yeah. but uh, our kids, fortunately, are gracious to yeah. us. But uh, yeah, it, uh, it, I can remember names, but birthdays. Ooh, man, you almost you and Donna uh, almost need to have like weekly meetings of. Okay, oh, are there any birthdays, birthdays or significant no, we events? We, you know, we we try to do that. Wow, that's we, awesome. We really do, or something <laughs> important. So. That's cool. All right, Zach Vasser, who are you? What do you do? Um, what did previous employment, previous season look like for you? Mm -hmm. And uh, and what's your connection to this uh, this guy over here, Andy? Yep. Well, I was first going to say he doesn't remember birth dates. Donna does that, <laughs> and I'm certain that she is in charge of all that. So, I'm certain. Yeah, I'm certain she writes it down. Also, <laughs> right. You. I bet yeah. she. You just those show weekly up, meetings. right? I, yeah, I'm just. She's amazing. <laughs> yeah, she is. You know, uh, all jokes aside. Um, so my name's Zach. Uh, I'm the. I'd say new 
men's pastor, men's group's pastor here at Beltway Park. Uh, but I'm not new to Beltway Park. I've been here for, I guess we moved to Abilene in 2016. Um, so we're six years here, five years at the park. Uh, mm-hmm. A good majority of that five years doing things in men's ministry. And, uh, yeah. you know, just starting with who's Randy to me, just to answer in reverse. Uh, I, I view Randy as a spiritual dad. Yeah, He knows that. Um, he's made a major impact in my life when I came to Abilene. I'd been set free from a lot of things, but... I had not had the perspective of living free to things, and yeah. uh, him and this ministry and just this church body as a whole really helped me with that. But you know, me, who, who am I? I uh, mean, I'm a husband, a dad, a son. Um, you know, we we I was born in Abilene, moved away. I'm kind of that same person. A lot of you guys are listening who have been here three or four times, and you keep coming back. Don't know why. <laughs> like, I, keeps I'm, bringing you back. Yeah, I'm that guy. I'm uh, the vacuum it's of the, Abilene. It's the promised um, land. Yeah, I love it. I, I love Abilene. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So um, we all come back. It's just a matter. Of yeah. Time. Or we never leave. Or never leave. <laughs> or, Amen yeah. to that. And yeah. if you try to right. leave, you'll be back. That's right. So there's all those things. Uh, but um, you know, I, I I got a interesting spin on I think some of this, much like Randy was saying before we hit record. Um, I coming from I was a chaplain in the oil field for three and a half years. Prior to that, though, I was a business coach in that world with a, a company here locally. And then before that, I was self-employed. Before that, I was a coach for 10 or 11 years. And so I just, my, my whole life as an adult has been transitioning since, yeah. I mean, really, really since the beginning of getting out of college and taking my first job. So um, right now, though, going into full-time ministry um, and working for a church, it is, I would say, probably the biggest transition I've made. Hmm. Um if I were to line up the, the other things I've done, be, because mostly I, I have felt like most people would feel is real unqualified. And what are we doing right. here? And, yeah. But but I think God's got yeah, a, a I would, plan. I would and, say the same thing. And all me. those, you know, leaving coaching and going to the business world was pretty typical. A lot of people do that, leaving the business yeah. world and, you know, finding a heart for God and that can happen to you. Um, but anyway, so yeah, uh, this this is interesting. I am currently in process. Yeah. Right? And I, for those listening, especially if you are, you know, what we would call young adults, millennials, whatever, in your 20s or 30s, um, mid-20s to probably through 30s, or at least most in, you know, late middle 30s, whatever. Uh, It's really good for us to hear that you didn't, it's not like you found the one thing and you did that for your entire life. Mm-hmm. Um, right. Because I know something that that drives me and that I constantly have to face, and, and Sarah, you can speak into this also, is there's kind of, at least in our generation, this pressure of, I need to hear what God's plan is for me, or I need to know what my life is about, yeah. and I'm going to do it, and do I'm going to build it, and that is it. Mm-hmm. Like, my position is my purpose. Well, we start getting asked that question, what are you going to do when you get to college? Yeah. In, in high school. I mean, and it's that pressure for an 18, 19 year old to figure out what they're going to do with the rest of their life. Shoot, I don't even know who I was decision. until I was 25 yeah. or 26. And 31. I'm still discovering who I am. Yeah. So I think it is good to remember that. I mean, we do face seasons and those seasons, they have a beginning and they do have an end. And then yeah. there's that transition period in there too. And I love so many people have used the word process. Mm-hmm. We are in Absolutely. process. It's such, yes. and I think it's even in the definition of a transition yeah. that. Yeah. We are in process daily becoming more and more of who God has created us to be and figuring that out. Like we don't have, you know, all of it figured out on day one. It's, it's just a process of becoming yeah. who the Lord is. I think so many of us uh, want to eliminate risk mm-hmm. from life of almost any kind. They want to know what's coming and they want to plan. They want to make sure and all that kind of thing. And if you're one of those Folks, uh, I'll save you a lot of anguish. You just need to get past that because there will be risk. That's the nature of being a human being that God created us and created life that way. So you will not be able to eliminate risk, but risk can become a really good friend if you will just trust God in the process. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. uh, Just in the last season, we've talked a lot, Randy and I, and this whole idea of high risk, high reward. And even Brett and I, we've had some conversations about that. I mean, you're taking a what I would say is a large risk, but you know, I believe there's large reward that comes with yeah. it. Um, we, we may not know what that reward is, but when you look back, a lot of times with these big decisions you have to make in life, when you are um, believing that God is the one that's nudging you into those places, you, you almost always look back and go, "Man, thank God that 
I took that step of faith because I didn't see this, but here's what happened. And here's mm-hmm. what, you know, was, the, and, and usually it's, it may be not even be your own benefit. It's someone right. else's that you didn't even realize pushes them into what God's, God's calling them to do, yeah. you know, and just that, how the kingdom just advances. It's yeah. If there's, if there's any growth that is able to be gained, earned, achieved, whatever, it comes from risk. If we want any, you know, let's put it in kind of financial investment terms, ROI, return on investment. If you want any kind of return, any yields from what you put in, there is always a risk attached to that. And often the things that yield the greatest returns are also the ones where you have to be more risk adverse. Absolutely. You know, if you invest into the safe things, cool, it's more secure, but you're probably not going to gain much at all. Um, right. But it's 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 acknowledging, and I think Randy, you said something about it of of learning to welcome the risk and get to know the risk because those are the places where man, there really is the most change or growth or transformation. But it's not it's not without cost, and it's not without like there could be some big you know oopsies <laughs> or misses or mistakes in the midst of it. Um, and, and we'll get into all of that, mm-hmm. but even just as a side note to that, and we were talking about this before we hit record of even when we either don't know how to hear God, we're not following God, or maybe we're trying to hear them to the best of our abilities, uh, to the best of our abilities that we're trying to hear him. Even if we mess up or make a mistake, the beautiful thing about the gospel is that he redeems all things. Mm-hmm. Nothing is wasted. Uh, Reese was even talking about moments in his life before he was following the Lord and and making decisions that didn't welcome the Lord at all. But looking back on your life, you can see the hand of the Lord in it and Absolutely. through it and redeeming it. And so for anyone listening, you're not going to miss it and nothing is wasted if you live in a posture that is surrendered to the Lord because mm-hmm. whatever it is that you have, good or bad, the Lord's going to redeem it. And that's the beautiful thing. And so even when we face risk, there's a hope, honestly, for us. That it's like, I know that I'm not going to lose it all because, one, I have nothing, but I've been given everything, and that mm-hmm. cannot be stripped away. I mean, it's what it's what Jesus says, that you know, neither death nor life nor angels nor demons nor anything on earth, you know, below earth, nothing can separate us from the love of God that's in Christ Jesus. And so Mm -hmm. to me, that kind of, even as I'm talking about it, I'm like, man, I want to go like kick down a a door and like charge into somewhere. It's like, I can't lose. Um, I might feel moments of loss, but in the end, like truly, I I can't lose. Mm -hmm. And so, um, well, Zach, you, you kind of referenced, and so I'll just, I'll go ahead and I'll, I'll give my announcement. Zach kind of mentioned it. He said, I'm taking a, what would seem like a very big risk. Uh, So a little announcement to the world, to the podcast world. I am stepping down uh, from the position of online campus pastor here at Beltway because I feel the Lord stirring something new in me. And it's exciting, but it's also scary, and it's not without its loss or its grief or its questioning or its process. And this isn't something that was decided like, you know, one week. It, it's kind of been a, a year plus kind of stirring that have felt the Lord and multiple points and conversations and counsel in it. Uh, but, and we'll, we'll go through kind of that as we talk about seasons and transitions and the process in between. But I am leaving this position, but the person picking up the mantle to take it into the next season is in this room and on this podcast. It's Sarah. (laughs) Sarah Turner. I'm super excited and um, also in process and transitioning, just like you. Yes. (laughs) Learning new things. Yes. So it's going to be wonderful. And thanks for all the things you've already taught me. (laughs) Yes. No, I'm I'm really excited. And and one of... you know, when we had this thought to to bring together, you know, there's recently been a, a transition and a change within the men's pastor role and the men's ministry here at Beltway. And now, mm-hmm. you know, me and Sarah with online campus, it was like, man, how great of a conversation would this be to put all four of us in the room and just talk about how did that process look? What, you know, who did we include? How right. did we know it was the Lord? 
And even in knowing it's the Lord, what are the things that you still have to uh, say goodbye to or or lose? And so um, I don't know who wants to pick it up first, but um, I'll make Reese go first. He's, he's <laughs> Everybody's looking at Randy right now. <laughs> Why did Randy I know that first. was going to happen? Well, Randy, you're the sage. You are the wise man That's of good. this group. And I don't say that because you're the oldest in here. You really do walk in such wisdom, and, and Vassar oh, yeah. already spoke to that, that you are a spiritual father, you're a spiritual grandfather, and you know you have, you have history of walking with the Lord and trusting Him, and um, so yeah, we do actually look to you. One, you're the first one to step out and make a change, at least in this room, uh, but also what you've learned in the process about the Lord and yourself is worth, is worth us hearing and learning from. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, uh, I appreciate that. You know, I I do know, at least it seems that way, and now the good news, I can smile about it at least uh, a little bit, is that it seems like I had to learn nearly everything the hard way. And uh, there's a lot of pieces to that. But at the same time, the Lord has been kind, and when... uh, when I did make some decisions to, I got to have the Lord come into me big time mm-hmm. and help me make some super big changes. From that point on, back in really in the 90s, it's been a time where the two words that I think of, God's always been, and was this way even before I realized it, but God's always in the business of extending His grace showing us new ways how he is going to give you grace and what you're doing as he's growing you, as you're in process, all those things. But uh, the other one is is that the Lord is going to constantly be redeeming things and using things in your life that were not done so well at all. And in, in fact, in very, very... Uh, uh, bad ways shall i say yeah he the the lord is constantly bringing redemption in our relationship with him and then in the relationships he gives us with others it it is always about redeeming once we begin to allow jesus be the deal and yeah. not just uh, be a poser about it if yeah. you will and you know i I know, Randy, in multiple areas, like you just said, you've experienced so much redemption, not just, when we say redemption, we're not just saying, like, you know, salvation and, like, eternal oh, life, but we're talking absolutely. literally about the the things that fell apart in life that either happened to us or because of us, because of choices right. we made. Like, Randy, I know you've experienced so many things that have been redeemed, and and I've experienced so many things that have been redeemed, and I mean, everyone in this room has has seen that, and and as I, man, I'm so passionate about the Lord's ability to redeem, because He really is that good. Like, I think about all the ways that God has brought new life from every moment, every decision, every mistake, every whatever, and it's brought me to where I am today where I know God the way I know him and I know and understand myself the way I know and understand myself. Like God is that good. He's that loving. He's that gracious that our worst of worsts that he in only a way that God can do it, he can turn it, redeem it, make it good and make it life giving. No, absolutely. There's... Like it still, it still blows my mind. Um, so for you, Randy, what you know, obviously some of it is age. You're you're at the point where honestly, you probably, according to the culture, you should have retired a long time ago, right? <laughs> That's what, what they say. How old were you when you took the men's pastor position? So sixty two. Okay. And uh, and then you did it for thirteen and, years. Thirteen years, so almost seventy five when I stepped down. Yeah. So. Obviously, some people could say, "Well, you know, Randy knew it was it was coming because you know you can't do this job forever. There's you have to have retired life, and I'm sure that played a factor into it. But I'm also sure it it wasn't the deciding factor because honestly, you have enough stamina, energy, and hard headedness that you'd be at this you know as long as you have breath in your lungs. Well, I've watched 
around here. You you can't be around here very long these last 20 years and not know the Don Fintos, the Charles Carnes, the Jack Taylors, the R.T. Kendalls, and others who, who much older than, than I am, were just kicking it uh, for the kingdom. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, in fact, their best years probably were their have been the, their last twenty years. I think they would they would say that. And so when you're exposed to that, that gave me uh, a lot of hope and gave me a lot of encouragement. And uh, and I knew that when I retired, quote unquote, it's really just kind of a, a retirement. I guess you use that word because you are in your 70s. But it was just a step down from one post yeah. that the Lord was kind to put me in. And now he's creating some other opportunities. And as Donna and I are in process, that's a good word for the morning, mm-hmm. uh, in transitioning and, and having some ministries. I mean, we're still around here. Yeah. And, uh, don't have any plans at all to not be around here at all. So we'll be in the Beltway world, but uh, we think our scope of where our involvement will be, certainly with kids and grandkids a little more, but we have some things that we believe the Lord has laid upon us yeah. to to pray into and step into, and so it's going to be exciting to see yeah. that all take place. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's interesting what you said. You know, Because you're in your 70s, you guess people call it retirement, but really it is a... It is a transition. It's a new season. It's going from one position to the next. Your purpose doesn't change. If anything, our purpose grows and evolves because we discover more of who God is, what He has for us, and who we are in Him. And so... I don't know. That's just funny because if oh, you know, right. I make the decision, and people aren't like, "Oh, Brett, you're retiring." You know, <laughs> they're like, "Oh, you're going on to something else." But that I don't know. Maybe even just speak to that. If if you are in your sixties or seventies listening to this, you know, the faith to believe that your best years are ahead of you for what you have, That's what right. you carry, and what the Lord wants to do through you. I think too often it's like, well. My, you know, my energy is gone or my youth is gone. So therefore, you know, now it's time to to sink down. If anything, like it's the time for you to stand up because this world right. and the generations underneath mm-hmm. you need you. They need the wisdom and the revelation and the experience that that you've gained, you mm-hmm. know? Well, I, I totally agree with you. Um, and it is, to me, it's very... Uh, uh, I don't even know what the word is, but I'm I'm humbled that that the Lord still wants to use us. Because when I was much younger, I didn't really see that much. Mm-hmm. I didn't I didn't recognize it. I didn't I didn't see it. And but now knowing that <clears throat> with all the redeeming and redemption, and and then these last thirteen years in in the role as as a pastor. Uh, Wow, just seeing some things that it is. I think we talked about before we came on the air. For me, the tra- these last three transitions into from business world into men's pastor, and then from men's pastor into our uh, a ministry that we Donna and I are now beginning. This it's really pre awareness and trusting of Holy Spirit until until then. To, uh, to where now it is having having by the grace of God his showing us the reality of Holy Spirit and how mm-hmm. he works and how he loves and how he leads and and all that we can trust that voice we can trust that leading it changed everything in terms of being willing to walk through it and even the risk Paul had his moments of like, oh my goodness, what are we going to do here? But then really the excitement that we know now that God's got things for us mm-hmm. to do yeah. is is really important, and it's uh, it's amazing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, it's been, you know, like you mentioned, being around this place, but also, you know, I've, I've worked side by side, you, Randy, for the last seven years. Mm-hmm. And you modeling that as well of like really being here at, at Beltway and witnessing the the leaders and the figures and the faith that is present in this place. Like I don't I don't know that before I would have thought that there was really anything after retirement. It's like, oh, you know, just 
family and kids and grandkids. Sure. And that is a piece of it. But right. to see that there is a a drive for more and that, like it doesn't stop. I don't know. It's it's really challenged and inspired me. And so now, you know, as a 32 year old, I'm sitting here not only thinking about this season and the next season, but I'm even praying into like what does it look like when when you know me and my wife are in our 70s or our 80s? What does right. what can God do? What what can we believe Him for? Rather than just like, oh, well, we lived it. Now mm-hmm. we just kind of <laughs> rest <over. laughs> until. Yeah. Our culture, our culture is so conditioned, I think, um, especially maybe on this side of the world, to go, well, once you hit a certain age, you're done. Like, now mm-hmm. you get to kick back and relax. And I, I have been immensely, immensely blessed by people in my own life, including my grandparents, who didn't choose that either, mm-hmm. who chose, no, there is more kingdom work that I believe that the Lord has for um, for. I'm specifically speaking of my grandparents, and I was blessed by that. Their legacy and who they are and what I saw before they, you know, moved on. um, I was just so grateful, so so grateful. And your your children and your grandchildren, and just like Vassar said earlier, you're a spiritual dad to many. You know, the impact, the kingdom impact you're making is huge. And so I want to say thank you for not stopping. Yes, thank, thank you. Thank you for not stopping. Yeah, thanks, I want to be like you. <laughs> when oh man, for real. Seventies. For real. So. And like I, it's funny because I've I don't know the last year I've found myself like longing for, I guess, knowing that I'm going to be in a place in the future where whether death is tomorrow or it's another 10 years or 20 years, like getting to that point where I've walked so much with the Lord and I've lived life and I'm like getting to that place where like, I don't have to prove anything to Mm, anyone. One of the things I love about you, Randy, is you don't have to prove squat to anyone. Um, And some of that is, it, it seriously is, you know, age. Like young people, they want to prove themselves. They want to grow. They want to do this. They want to do that. And there is a confidence and a freedom that, that, you know, being later on in life, like it affords you of, Mm -hmm. you know what? Like I'm free and I have every moment. I don't know how many are left. I have every moment to use, to invest. And I am done with using it to try to convince people that I'm like, worthy of being liked or loved or whatever. And so like, I don't know, I find myself over the last year, like longing for getting more and more closer to that point where it's like, I've got nothing to prove in every moment. Although I don't know how much it is that I have, every moment is going to be spent. It's going to be invested. uh, And it's, it's going to be, okay, Lord, how are you going to use this? And I'm not going to have any regrets. So yeah, man, uh, Vassar, let me. You've been jotting down over there yeah. on your notebook. Let me let yeah, me kick yeah, it to yeah. you. We're definitely not done with Reese by any means. There's a lot of questions to to ask about transitions and risks and all of that. But yeah, let me kick it over to Zach. Yeah, so um, I'm just sitting here thinking about all the stuff Randy's been saying, and and it really speaks to the heart of uh, adventure of being on a life yeah. of adventure, you know, these were taking risks and not knowing maybe what the return is going to be and for the sake of the kingdom and for other people. And, you know, you, you have done so much that um, I think we've been all blessed to, speak in men's ministry wise, to step into something that's got such a foundation. But there's even a transition inside the ministry, not just an individual. And the transition is right. sons who have identified themselves and, and realized that like what Brett was just saying, like what I do does not define who I am. This ranking system in my job doesn't really validate me. What validates me is I am a son. And we've got so many men who have stepped in that, but so many of us, myself included, are in transition of now seeing ourselves to fathering yeah. other men. And in a culture where you know we're up against what the world is telling you, you have to go do, mm-hmm. um, there's something about the way you've carried yourself, Randy, of just being steady and calm and humble. That really, that that's the model of Jesus is is to do that. Um, yeah. And it's very attractive because everything else is exhausting. Yes. I've, I've done all that, man. Mm-hmm. I've I've chased all the money and earned it and lost it. I've chased all the accolades and got them. And at the end of the day, they don't really do anything for you. They just collect dust. I mean, we could just go on and on. Like yeah. what what really truly matters is 
this adventure you get on inside your life with with the Lord and stepping into that. And yeah. so when you see somebody that's done that well, not perfect, because like you said, there's, you know, learn the hard way or however you put it down was, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm willing to do that. I heard Randy talk to a bunch of guys not too long ago, and it was all about counting the cost, like kind of what Brett was saying, and what is it going to cost you to go really be a disciple, and it's going to cost you everything. <laughs> yeah. And so, you know, but then at, at the other side of that coin, like, well, what's chasing all the world going to cost you? It's going to cost you everything, too. So, like, just yeah, pick your heart, man. Yeah, like, it's right. going to cost you your life. Right. You're going to spend your life chasing yes. it. And in the end, like what you yeah. just said, what do you have? Yeah. Dust collects, you know, Scripture says, yep. moth and rust destroy. Yep. Like, it's going to it's gonna be wiped out with the end of the earth whenever that happens, yeah. whatever that looks like. Yeah. Well, what matters is legacy. I mean, Sarah yeah. said it. That That word, like... I'm raising two daughters. I'm counting on some men to step in at some point in, in, in time, and they're going to, you know, connect a legacy, and I want to be a part of that some sort of way, Rachel and I both. And, yeah. you know, I'm, I'm, you know, the biggest mission I have on in life is family. Mm. It's, it's not even this job. It's not this podcast. It's not the men's ministry. It, it's all those things are important, but they're not, they're not primary. And yeah. so... You know, I, think, I think figuring that out, every one of us, though, have to get on life's journey in order to find that. Yeah. So, now, like, you're listening sure. to this. I'm 41 years old. I, I didn't get saved until I was 31 years old. So I spent a good portion of adulthood just rebellious and hellish and, you know, you name it, and everything was self-serving about Zach. And and all the while, you're, you're winning and losing some. Like, you just, everything just got so fleshly. You, you just, you come to a place where you think like, is this how life's going to be for, for like, is this it? Yeah. This can't be it. Um, so there, there's always going to be a learning curve. The, the, the fun thing about what I've found with the Lord is I've, even after discovering him and then walking in freedom and listening and, uh, and obeying, there's, you don't lose that element. Yeah. Like there's still a, a sacrifice, a suffering, you know, I mean, not everything's just going to be handed right to you. You know, so it's not like go sit on the couch and listen to the Lord and he's going to change your life and everything's going to, you still have to get up, be an action taker. You know, I think some people get so stuck mm -hmm. in the mud of like, like, I think one of y'all said earlier, I, I'm just going to sit here until the Lord tells me what to do and I'm going to go do it with everything that I have. Like, well, hold on a minute. Like, mm -hmm. just start doing some stuff. You'll start to learn the voice of the Lord very clearly. Exactly. Another voice you will learn very clearly is the voice of the enemy. Right. And, and I'm right. telling you, he, they're both talking. Oh yeah, yeah, and right. we don't have hearing problems, man. We got listening problems. Yeah. <laughs> so like, yeah. but if you aren't doing, if you're not an action taker, yeah, I don't know that you'll just you know sit in some cave somewhere and get it figured out. Right, and you know I, I've said this multiple times uh, for our online campus after services recently. You know, there's this there's this deceptive thought and belief that we've bought into that. Oh, when I get to this point, or when <laughs> right, I understand exactly. this, when I have this, when I have more boldness, when I have more time, when I have, then I will uh, do. We do that with tithing. Yeah, we do that with everything. Yeah. But the but the, the fact is, is like you're not gonna get it unless you go. Like you you <laughs> take action. I, I said on Sunday, like you're not going to grow in it unless you go in it. Like mm -hmm. you've That's got good. to step in it. So if we're just sitting back waiting on the couch for, for yeah. God to do something or for us to feel confident enough, you know, it might seem like your time has, will never come, but maybe you're just missing it because you're supposed to step out. You know, yeah. I think about scripture good. saying like all the promises in God are yes and amen. Okay. He's giving you a yes to the things that your heart is stirring for, to mm -hmm. the things that you wonder, the what ifs mm -hmm. of life, the what ifs of faith, the what ifs of calling. And so it's not like with the promises of the Lord are yes. So that means, okay, you're asking a question. The Lord says, yes. Now that means you have to do something with it. Step yeah. out, be an action taker. Yeah. Yeah. And in, in all that too, thinking through, I don't remember the original question, but in this season, you know, a lot of times God is going to, he may, I mean, you're listening, he may talk to you audibly, I don't know. Most of the time he talks to you through other people. Mm -hmm. And so in in my transition, this what I decided to do was like really hunker down into who is my inner circle. And I don't need opinions of other people's opinions. And what do you think about what Brett said? And, Brett, and Sarah, what do you think about what Sarah? No, 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 no. I, I need to really pray and press in. And the Lord just gave me a real crystal clear group of people. I already knew who they were. Um, 
and and I went into those people. One of them was Randy. One of them was my wife. Um, one of them was uh, I jotted some down here. I was thinking about it. A friend of mine named Cody Mahon. This is a guy. He, he's a lead pastor in a church in Dallas Fort Worth. He was my first men's pastor. Um, he he transitioned out of the business world into this world, and so there was that. One of the guys was a guy that. Uh, works at a church here locally that's been in and out of that kind of world. One of the guys that used to work at Betway Park and doesn't. One of them's my best friend. A couple of elders, and really, that was about it, you know. And and I just started pressing and praying into the advice I was given. And what was so great was the Lord just kept affirming to me that I've called you to this. Mm-hmm. You can't fail unless you quit. And no matter what you do, you need to just stay surrounded with people that'll speak life into you and believe that's in whatever good. that you're doing, and it's yeah. going to work itself out. Like, and that's there's there's others, you know, um, on that list. The the toughest conversation I had, and and the top of my list was one I didn't mention, so I was kind of saving it to be separate. Was uh, Bo and Candace Dunnigan, yeah, who uh, are just a couple of my best friends, Bo especially, and was my employer at the time when this call came in. To look into this, and I did not immediately tell him about that because I was a little, I was, I was afraid. Afraid, yeah. yeah. Just, man, what are we doing? Like, just having that conversation. And and another friend of mine that's a business owner in town, his name's Trey Yarbrough. I, I was talking to him a little, and and he said, "You you must go to their home and you need to speak to them." And I did that. And I mean, we're it was kitchen tables and tears, and I mean, we just been through a lot of stuff. It turned their company completely upside down for the last four years or so. Um. But God was preparing us for this, like mm-hmm. us, as in it, this wasn't just Zach or just Randy or just it was a us thing. It all the way back to Ray Templeton being involved in that yeah. that company and the influence there sure. and the way that's impacted. I mean, it's, it's the craziest, it's craziest awesome. stories. We don't have time yeah. for it all. But I'm so glad that I had a friend tell me, you must go do this. Yeah. Because I know God was telling me through him. I already knew that. It confirmed in your spirit. But I, I, needed, yeah. I needed that. Yeah. You know. Absolutely. Well, I... I mean, sitting here, and not to cut you off, I want to hear more. Like, we all had those moments of, like, I've got to have this conversation with this person. Maybe it was our employer. Maybe it was our family. Maybe our family was our employer. Like, (laughs) it, you know, maybe your employer was like your family. I had to have the conversation with, you know, Pastor David and even uh, Pastor Randy Turner, these men that have been like father figures in my life, not only was I a teenager and find, you know, did I find Jesus in this place, but now I've been on staff for seven years. And like, there was that piece of me that was like, man, I really don't want to disappoint mm-hmm. like these fathers. I don't want to, uh, you know, I don't want to let them down. I don't want it to yeah. seem like I'm not grateful for. I was in the same boat. I felt the same things. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. yeah, and you. I mean, you felt that with your biological with my dad, family, yeah. who was absolutely. your employer. Mm-hmm. Like, do you want to speak to that a little bit? Yeah, I. I mean, the conversations there are tough when you feel like you believe like this is. There's a turning. That's the word I kept coming back to. It's like stirring in my spirit. There is a turning coming, and I don't know when how, what, I had all these questions. And I was focusing on all those questions. Right, trying to get it all figured out. Once I have it figured out, then Then I will Then I will go and take the risk, sure. (laughs) Um, But the thing that the Holy Spirit just kept saying again and again and again is, it's not up to you. Yeah, It's not up to you. And if you will just follow. And so I had to get really good at stopping my nature, which is to plan ahead and plan for and have all the words and figure it out to lean in Mm. and listen. That's good. You said that earlier about being a good listener. And it's like, Holy Spirit, I have got to hear you. I need confirmation. Yes, Lord. And then asking him for his wisdom, not the advice of others. I love bringing other people into conversations when you're sensing God stirring something and changing something, whatever that looks like. And yes, there was a point where I did bring in people that the Lord highlighted Mm -hmm. to have those conversations with to bring, because I knew I would need confirmation for a, a change like this. Um, but yeah, it was definitely those same emotions of worry I would disappoint. And this, on paper, what I was doing made 100% sense. Yeah. Like it made sense to That's do true. what I was doing. Yeah. And it didn't make sense to do something different. Right. And it definitely didn't make sense to do this. And it's hard so. to convince people <laughs> right. that, because again, I mean, I'm. what's funny, me and Sarah are kind of swapping roles, yeah. uh, swapping worlds even. Mm-hmm. Uh 
Because I, I mean, I was the same way. Because, and I'm not saying that. I, I do not know that I will never, you know, be a pastor again. Honestly, I have a probably a pretty great confidence that the Lord is going to pull me back into mm-hmm. being a pastor or, or planning a church or leading a church or somehow, you know, having leadership involvement in a church. But the same kind of boat of like, well, on paper, like, you are this, but you're so good. You're mm-hmm. talented. Like you have yeah. these gifts. Mm-hmm. You went to school for this. You've been active in this. You know, I've been a pastor for 13 and a half years. And so all of these things on paper, it's like, no, Brett should do this. And to try to convince people, no, but the Lord's actually calling me to do this. Like it's hard. Yeah. And I want to go back to those conversations because the conversations I had with my family. I was really nervous about. Yeah. I mean, I did not want to disappoint, but I want to say that they were so good. Mm-hmm. The Lord met me and met all of my family that were in that conversation and that, at that time with so there was just so much grace and love and kindness and excitement because what I mean, what I knew in my head, but my dad confirmed through our conversation. It was like I want you to follow what you are hearing the Lord Mm -hmm. say. And so in that you do doubt, you know, you doubt, am I really hearing the Lord in this? You know, even in that moment, hearing that confirmation was so encouraging. And then I was able to go back into places because that little, I mean, just like you said earlier, the enemy is talking just like the Holy Spirit's talking and it's who you're listening to. And so even in that moment of having that conversation and getting that confirmation from the person I was most uh, you know, worried yeah. about upsetting, yeah. but of course didn't. And then also in the back of my head, hearing a doubt and then going back to the confirmations that the Holy Spirit yeah. had already laid out. And I got to go back and see how he has brought confirmation to this place that I could say, I'm not going to listen to that doubt. Yeah, I'm going to choose to listen to how the Lord has already yeah. proven himself because I've got nothing to prove. Right. But he he's proving himself faithful yeah. right here in this moment. Yeah. It and gives to be you able confidence. To, it really gives you good. confidence to continue yeah. to take the next step that you're being asked to take. Yeah. But that confidence wouldn't have been there unless you would have stepped out That's right. and had the conversations yeah. that you had, you know, you were mm-hmm. seeking the people or the prayer time or the wisdom to allow confirmation from what you thought was the hearing. Lord. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like mm-hmm. it takes it yep. takes action, absolutely. And, so, for, and for me, Brett, the thing that I think about just listening to you there, Sarah, is as I'm thinking back, when the, the transformation to when, oh, Holy Spirit, I hope you'll answer me, I hope you'll show me, I hope you'll give me direction, I hope, I hope, I hope, mm-hmm. versus... You know he is. Mm-hmm. It it will be usually longer than you than you want it to be. It and it may not look the way you thought it might look, but the the Lord is faithful to yes. show us yeah. and speak to us, and we can trust that He will give us the affirmation, the confirmation, whatever we need. But going from hope, He will do something to knowing He will do something. Gives you so much more confidence mm-hmm. to step into the risk, to step mm-hmm. into the adventure, to step into still some unknown. Right. That makes all the difference. Well, yeah. faith is such an action word. I mean, it requires action to have it. Yeah. And so it's us taking that step first and then going, it, it's not about me and depending on myself. I'm not going to do the self reliance thing here. What I'm hoping to do in the unknowns is to depend on the one who is known yeah. and who knows me the Absolutely. most. Right. Yeah, so. it's good. You know, we're faced with these moments in life, um, and I, I can remember every moment really clear of like, am I going to choose to believe who God says he is and who others have testified him to be? That's right. That's like, true. So it That's is. Right. it is what takes you from, you know, like hoping to actually doing like you get to this transition you get to this fork in the road of i can either give in to fear i can give in to conventional wisdom i can get you know give in to what is comfortable or what is known mm-hmm. but you get to this fork in the road and it's like do i believe that god is actually who he is and then if you decide and if you step out in faith it is an action word it literally is a God, I am believing you, but you better show up because <laughs> yeah. I'm going to lose it all if you don't. And that, like, I want to get back to, like, the for just a moment, like, the risk part of it that, like, if the Lord doesn't show up, 
you know, one, we can do it all in our own strength. And I I don't know about y'all. I'm only at 32 years old, but like, I'm tired of doing what I can accomplish. Like, I have done what Brett can do for so long, and not to say that it's bad and not to say that the Lord wasn't in it, but I have leaned very heavily on my strength and my ability and recognizing that even that is a gift from the Lord. But kind of like with this move, it's like, man, I want to step into something that that I can't do and only God can do, and He has to show up. He has yeah. to show up in it. You know, I, I remember in... I've mentioned this before in the season of my divorce and being faced with going through and processing the pain and dealing with everything. I remember having this moment of in the midst of all the feelings and the fears that I had of how much pain there was to be felt and processed. And, you know, my life just literally, it felt like everything up to that point was wasted and this and that, like I came to this point of, God, I'm going to dive into this because I am choosing to believe you are who you are and that you're going to show up. And I, I specifically said this to God. I said, if you don't, then I'm done. I'm right. over. Like, please take me. Take me out of it. Like, <laughs> you've got to show up, and I'm trusting you too. And it was a very scary thing because I remember sitting in in one of our, our pastor's office and like, weeping, not like, you know, oh, tear fell down your face, like snot flying, weeping, like trembling because of how much I knew that I needed to walk through and process. And I was so scared, yeah. but being in that place of Lord, I'm, I'm going to step out in this, but you've got to show up. Yeah. And so, well, I think about something that Rodney Hogue talked about last year at boot camp, um, about the way that Jesus modeled is basically, you know, he, as a, as a fisherman, these guys casted nets. So fish sometimes got caught and knew they were caught and some didn't know they got caught. So his, his model was real simple is he's going to teach and then he's going to demonstrate or he's going to demonstrate and then he's going to teach. That's really the play. So when you think about the kingdom, um, and you're, you're stepping out into some faith action step, like he's going to do it. You just may not see it, or or you saw it, and that's why you're doing it. Either way, both things are happening. Yeah, does that make sense? Mm-hmm. Like, um, it, it's hard to fully explain what I'm saying, but if you're listening and you've experienced God work in your life, and you think about that, like there was something you saw a testimony or something, you were like, "Man, I've got if I would just do that for me," and you took a step of faith because of what you saw, and then something similar happened. Maybe it's not exactly the same thing, but you you had that happen. It, it could be anything. It could be a healing. It could have been a whatever, you know, um, either way. And that that's really what we're called to do is we're, we're going to talk about and teach about what God's capable of doing. And then yeah. we're going to step out and model it. And then, or we're going to step out and model it and say, oh my gosh, look what he just did. You know, yeah. it's it, either way, man, the risk is if you really believe, mm-hmm. then when it happens, it's a total transformational deal. Yeah. yeah. And, I think, oh, oh, go ahead. Go for it. I was just going to say, I think it's really important to remember that we, it would be good for us not to limit God. Yeah. Because he is so limitless. <laughs> and so if he's so limitless and we remember that he's gracious and good, which is what we've been talking mm-hmm. about in all things, that means in our limits, he's gracious and good in that and right. knows them anyway. And then we yep. get to give them back over to him and go, we just, right. like what Brett said earlier, like we are depending on you, Lord, yeah. to be the creative storyteller that you are and trust yep. that there's going to be a good outcome, good uh, you know, ending or however yeah. we're going to, you know, whatever we're stepping into. So. Yeah. Yep. And again, back to this, Zach, I, I think you said something similar to this earlier, but like we get plagued or paralyzed by mm. the risk, but honestly, it's just as much or more risky for us to not That's right. step oh, out, sure. to not yeah. trust, to Without not believe, to not ask. Like I had someone ask me, uh, you know, th- about my, about my job and my transition here from stepping away from something I've known and done for 13 and a half years. I have eight years of biblical education and higher education on this. And, you know, my gift set lends me to, to, to be able to, to do this role really well. And I'm stepping into a role of, of for now, some real estate investing, rent houses, flip houses, short-term vacation rentals, like stuff like this that I've only been doing not even two years yet. And, you know, I was asked by someone like, 
well, can you afford that? Like, can you afford leaving something that's secure? I mean, isn't that risky? And I remember my response to them was, it's more risky for me to not because I know that I'm settling. I know that I'm not... I'm not trying to hear the Lord. I know that I'm sitting in my own comfort. There is more risk and more loss for me to not step out. Yeah. We're going to stop the conversation right there, and we will resume it back next Tuesday for this part two conversation with Randy Reese and Zach Vassar. We hope you have a great week. Be blessed, and remember, God is moving in your life beyond Sundays.